Good day to you from ChemHelp ASAP. All electrophilic aromatic substitutions, EAS reactions, have a common mechanism. Let's begin thinking about EAS by emphasizing the common features for each reaction before we look at individual reagents and reaction conditions. First, let's look at the name of this process, electrophilic aromatic substitution. As the name suggests, we are reacting an electrophile with an aromatic ring and will have a substitution as the overall transformation. EAS reactions occur in two steps. The first involves the attack of the aromatic ring as a nucleophile with a strong electrophile. This step is energetically unfavorable because the ring is so stable. It is aromatic after all. So the ring is very weakly nucleophilic. So in this first step, it's an addition reaction. We lose a pi bond in the aromatic ring. The resulting intermediate is a carbocation. We know what happens to carbocations. They either get attacked in an SN1 fashion or lose a beta hydrogen in an E1 reaction. Normally, we favor the SN1 reaction if possible. In the case of EAS reactions, we favor the E1 because the E1 will form a new pi bond and restore the aromaticity of the product. Removal of the beta hydrogen will require a base, but this will be a very weak base because EAS reactions normally require very acidic conditions. In general, I use B with a lone pair as the base in EAS reactions. We remove the beta hydrogen and that reforms our CC pi bond, our alkene, and that gives us our final product from this elimination reaction. I want to close with three comments. One, notice that we performed both an addition and an elimination. What is the net effect of an addition elimination? It's a substitution. Two, all of our EAS reactions will follow this pathway. The only difference will be the identity of the electrophile that starts the reaction. Three, the remaining videos in this playlist will show the experimental conditions required to create different electrophiles for different EAS reactions.